Is Justin Trudeau really Fidel Castro's secret son? The theory that just won't die. The rumor has sparked countless debates, memes, and conspiracy theories online, could Justin Trudeau, Canada's charismatic prime minister, actually be the son of Fidel Castro? The theory claims that Justin's mother, Margaret Trudeau, had a secret affair with the Cuban leader, making Castro his biological father. From striking physical resemblances to their family's unusual friendship, advocates of this theory argue that there's more than meets the eye. But does the theory hold up to scrutiny? Here, we explore the 10 main arguments, both for and against, that have kept this rumor alive for years. Number 1. Physical Resemblance The resemblance between Justin Trudeau and Fidel Castro has sparked intense interest, especially when images of a young Castro are compared side by side with Justin. Many note their shared facial features, including a broad nose, high cheekbones, square jawline, and expressive eyes. Castro, especially in his youth, had a distinctive face, often described as charismatic and intense, qualities some supporters claim are mirrored in Justin's appearance and demeanor. Side-by-side -side comparisons on social media have fueled this discussion, with some people believing that these similarities are too exact to be mere coincidence. On the other hand, Justin's critics argue that he strongly resembles Pierre Trudeau, noting similar details like facial bone structure, brow line, and mannerisms. Pierre's distinctive expressions and his tendency to communicate with hand gestures are traits that many see echoed in his son. To many, this likeness to Pierre indicates that any similarities with Castro may simply be superficial or incidental. Number 2. Close relationship between the Trudeaus and Castro. Pierre Trudeau's outreach to Fidel Castro during the Cold War was bold and controversial, as his 1976 visit to Cuba with Margaret occurred despite the U.S. embargo. Pierre and Fidel quickly developed a unique bond, with Pierre calling Castro a friend and even inviting him to Canada. Supporters of the theory believe this close relationship may have facilitated a more personal connection between Margaret and Castro. However, others argue that Pierre's friendship with Castro was purely political, built on mutual respect and Canada's independent foreign policy goals, rather than any personal intimacy. Number 3. Margaret Trudeau's Alleged Visits to Cuba There are persistent rumors that Margaret Trudeau may have visited Cuba independently on multiple occasions, growing close to Castro over the years. Supporters of this theory often point to Margaret's well-known free-spirited nature and openness to adventure, believing these qualities made her a likely candidate for a romance with the charismatic Cuban leader. Margaret, a prominent public figure and sometimes controversial personality, was known for breaking conventions, frequently discussing her personal life and emotional struggles. Her openness about her life experiences, she wrote candidly in her memoirs about her relationships and challenges, has led some to believe that if she had indeed had a romantic relationship with Castro, she would have disclosed it publicly. Critics point out that despite her openness, there are no confirmed records of independent visits to Cuba by Margaret, and her memoirs make no mention of any affair with Castro. Thus, without credible documentation, the theory remains speculative. Number 4. Castro's Attendance at Pierre Trudeau's Funeral One of the most compelling arguments for a deeper connection between Castro and the Trudeaus is Fidel Castro's attendance at Pierre Trudeau's funeral in Montreal in 2000, where he served as an honorary pallbearer. Some view this as an intimate role that Castro would only accept for a family member or a close personal friend. Castro's presence, they argue, indicates a special relationship that transcends diplomacy, especially given his limited attendance at foreign events and the significance of being asked to carry the casket. However, critics argue that this role should not be overinterpreted. As one of Pierre's few long-standing friends on the global stage, Castro's attendance is often viewed as an honor reflecting Pierre's dedication to international relationships, rather than proof of a hidden paternal connection. They also note that Trudeau's funeral brought together other significant international figures, emphasizing the unique political bonds that Trudeau formed during his career. Number 5. Justin Trudeau's Eulogy for Castro In 2016, following Castro's death, Justin Trudeau's eulogy for the Cuban leader shocked many with its reverence, calling Castro a remarkable leader and describing him as a larger-than-life leader who served his people. Justin's comments praised Castro as a beloved figure among Cubans, 
words that were met with backlash due to Castro's contested human rights record. Some supporters of the theory saw this unusually warm praise as evidence of a deeper, potentially familial, connection. They argue that Justin's words might reflect a hidden bond that influenced his perspective on Castro. However, critics argue that this praise was simply a diplomatic gesture, one in line with Canada's long-standing relations with Cuba. Justin has publicly honored other controversial leaders, including his diplomatic praise for China's Communist Party, suggesting that his eulogy was rooted in international relations rather than personal sentiment or lineage. Number 6. Unconventional Marriage of Pierre and Margaret Trudeau The marriage of Pierre and Margaret Trudeau was widely discussed for its unconventional nature, marked by their contrasting personalities and lifestyles. Pierre was significantly older than Margaret, and their 13-year age gap, combined with Pierre's demanding political career, reportedly caused strain. It's known that they agreed to allow each other some personal freedom, which has led some to theorize that this openness may have created space for a relationship between Margaret and Castro. As Margaret herself once remarked about her marriage, we had a very open relationship, one that respected individuality. This quote is often referenced by supporters of the theory as a suggestion that her marriage might have allowed for outside relationships. Yet, no evidence supports any romantic involvement between Margaret and Castro. Margaret's own accounts of her free-spirited life have included many personal details, but she has never hinted at an affair with Castro, making the theory largely speculative. Number 7. Timeline of Justin's Conception some theorists have analyzed the timeline of Justin Trudeau's conception as a potential clue to his parentage. Born on December 25, 1971, Justin's likely conception period would fall around March of that year. If Margaret had visited Cuba around this time, supporters argue, it could support the theory of Castro's paternity. However, historical records show that in March 1971, Margaret was with Pierre on a Caribbean trip, though there is no evidence they visited Cuba. Given these details, critics argue that the timeline undermines the theory, as Margaret was reportedly with her husband during this period, making it improbable that any encounter with Castro could have occurred. Number 8. Margaret Trudeau's Public Persona Margaret Trudeau's free-spirited personality is frequently referenced as a possible indicator that she might have been open to a romantic connection with Castro. Known for her candid nature, Margaret's approach to public life included openness about personal struggles, relationships, and her mental health challenges, particularly in her memoirs and interviews. Reflecting on her lifestyle choices, she once said, I was living my own life in a way that was true to me. Perhaps it was shocking or unusual, but it was honest. Supporters of the theory argue that this unconventional approach to life might align with a romance with the bold and rebellious Castro. However, her openness about her relationships and personal struggles makes it unlikely she would keep such an affair secret, especially given her history of candor. Critics argue that if such a relationship had existed, Margaret would have likely disclosed it, especially given her record of frankness about other relationships. Number 9. Castro's Close Involvement with the Trudeau Family Fidel Castro's significant involvement with the Trudeau family is often interpreted by theorists as a possible indication of deeper ties. Supporters argue that Castro's frequent presence in the Trudeau family's life hints at a relationship more intimate than mere political camaraderie. The fact that he accepted an invitation to attend Pierre's funeral and served as a pallbearer is often seen as further evidence of a unique bond. However, critics emphasize that Castro's friendship with Pierre Trudeau was grounded in political respect rather than personal or familial connection. They argue that Castro's closeness to the Trudeau should be seen as a diplomatic tribute to Pierre's vision of foreign policy, not as evidence of a secret paternal role. Number 10. Absence of Denial from the Trudeau Family some supporters of the theory point to the Trudeau family's silence on the rumors as an implicit acknowledgement or a way of avoiding controversy. They argue that if the rumor were baseless, the family might have openly dismissed it. However, critics counter that addressing unfounded rumors often serves only to amplify them. By choosing not to respond, the Trudeaus may simply be avoiding giving credibility to an unsupported theory. To many, the silence is seen as a pragmatic approach to ignore baseless speculation rather than an indication of any hidden truth. 